Mankind is now on the verge of a great new era, the fusion economy. The prospect now exists for a global economic revolution centered upon the high technology development of the Pacific region, driven by advanced infrastructure and the development of fusion power and technologies. The industrial development of the Trans-Pacific Territory demands an increase of the production of materials on a scale unprecedented in the history of mankind. The 60 dams of the Nawapa 21 system alone will require 300 million tons of steel. This is already more than triple the current U.S. annual steel production and one-fifth of the total world steel production. Add to that the roughly 800,000 tons of steel for 42 nuclear desalination plants and the millions of tons that will go into the building of thousands of miles of double and triple tracked high speed rail, stretching from the industrial centers of the east out to the newly built cities of the west and across the Bering Strait. In order to raise the standard of living of every nation of the globe to first world levels, world steel production will have to be in the range of 20 to 200 billion tons per year. Today, it is less than 2 billion tons. To reach this level of production, qualitatively new methods must be introduced, driven by fusion technologies which leapfrog the existing power of production. This means we must examine the critical factors which increase productivity, technological advance, and its associated rise in energy flux density. Take the history of the production of the resource which is most used by weight and is the main component of steel, iron. Look at the rise in productivity of successive designs of iron furnaces measured in tons of iron produced per iron worker per year, measured as a function of energy per square meter per hour, or energy flux density. From colonial times to the 1830s, charcoal-powered furnaces enabled a production increase from about 7 tons of iron per worker to about 10. By the 1840s, the first coal-powered furnaces, burning much hotter, doubled the energy flux density of the furnace and more than doubled the productivity of each worker. Through the 1880s and into the beginning of the 20th century, The introduction of even hotter burning coke and a preheated blast of air drove both the energy flux density and productivity up another threefold. The next leap was spurred by the needs of the World War II mobilization, resulting in the introduction of pure oxygen to the furnace as well as prefabricated iron pellets. The last leap was driven by NASA's Apollo program, bringing in the precision control and other improvements made possible by computers, culminating in an energy flux density 10 times higher and productivity 20 times higher than that of the early charcoal furnaces. The next evolution is in the domain of low and high temperature plasma processes. With much higher levels of energy flux density, plasma processing will dramatically increase the productivity of each worker. This will not only be true for iron production, but also steel, aluminum, titanium, and all other metals and resources needed for a modern society. Early plasma processing systems are already in limited use. Intermediate systems could become available with currently existing technologies, and advanced systems will become possible with thermonuclear fusion reactions. 
The history of early plasma processing goes back 100 years. High-powered plasma torch designs have been in existence since the early 20th century, first installed in the U.S. in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in 1928, but did not come into significant industrial use until the 1970s and 80s. One basic design of the plasma torch is a narrow metal tube with an anode and cathode electrode into which a gas is injected. When the electrical discharge from the negatively charged cathode to the positively charged anode passes through the gas, the resistance of the gas causes it to heat. The region in the center of the gas flow which surrounds the electrical discharge is superheated and ionized, much as a bolt of lightning will ionize the surrounding atmosphere, transforming the center of the gas column into a plasma. Unlike conventional metal heating elements, which melt at thousands of degrees, this plasma has no inherent limitations. The use of plasma torches in steelmaking furnaces is a very significant improvement over earlier technologies, running as high as 15,000 degrees Celsius, with much higher efficiencies over earlier furnace designs. However, Even at these high temperatures and efficiencies, metal processing, such as steelmaking, is still done by means of bulk heating and chemical reactions, melting the ore or scrap and adding materials into the furnace for the chemical reactions which result in pure steel or carefully crafted steel alloys. The next step in plasma processing will open up a new realm of possibilities in the degree of precision with which we can transform energy and matter. Rather than simply heating and melting with hot plasma, plasma itself, with all of its surprising properties, will be our new ore. Advanced plasmas from fusion reactors have already challenged our understanding of matter. Among other characteristics, at temperatures of 20 to 30 million degrees Celsius, hotter than the core of our sun, this rarefied gas of completely ionized elements reveals otherwise muted resonance characteristics specific to each isotope of each element. Fusion-powered systems, such as the fusion torch, will move materials processing and manufacturing beyond bulk heating and chemical reactions, and into a non-thermal process of tuning the energetic characteristics of a plasma to interact with the resonant properties of the material being processed. And this will only be scratching the surface we begin to enter a qualitatively new realm of possibilities in the degree of precision with which we can transform energy and matter. Inside of a fusion reactor, the fusion plasma, consisting of an ultra-hot ionized gas, reaches temperatures of tens and hundreds of millions of degrees. Some of this plasma can be funneled off as a direct process medium for industrial purposes. The plasma will first be taken through a connection zone to isolate it from the plasma of the reactor and remove high-energy neutrons from the process plasma. It is then moved to what is called the interaction zone. With the ultra-high heats and energies of fusion plasmas, metal ores or any other known material fed into the fusion torch are not merely melted, but are immediately shock vaporized and become part of the plasma as separate ionized elements and electrons. This now low temperature plasma, full of the elements which made up the ore or other material, is discharged from the fusion torch to a separation chamber 
so that the individual materials can be separated from one another and recovered. Once in a plasma state, various methods can be used to select the desired elements and isotopes based on their atomic as opposed to chemical properties. The plasma separation process utilizes the unique resonating frequency, or cyclotron frequency, of specific elements to selectively separate them. As the plasma, spiraling around the guiding magnetic field, is passed through a chamber, it is zapped with a very specific electromagnetic frequency, precisely tuned to the resonant frequency of a selected isotope. The targeted ions are energized, widening their orbits just beyond the width of a series of collection plates at the end of the chamber. The rest of the non-energized materials simply pass through. In addition to other proposed methods of separation, there are designs to ensure that as the discharged plasma cools to temperatures at which chemical reactions begin to occur, the elements recombine into specific chemical formations. Called selective recombination, this method requires the fine-tuning of the plasma conditions in the separation chamber to be optimal for the formation of very specific chemical compounds, creating batches of very pure chemical structures tailored down to the isotopic level. The very fine control over matter, characteristic of plasma processing, allows for the creation of more advanced materials, impossible to create with lower energy flux density systems. For example, steels could be created with elemental and isotopic compositions controlled to a precision never before possible enabling specialty steels that can handle higher temperatures and more neutrons from nuclear fission or fusion reactions with orders of magnitude less resulting radioactivity. This would allow more advanced reactors, which can either operate at higher energy flux densities or for longer periods. In general, bulk isotopic tailoring opens up a vast new domain of materials with revolutionary properties, available on a large scale. Intermediate plasma processing and advanced fusion-based systems will revolutionize the global economy. The high temperatures, energies, and other unique properties of plasma processing systems allow them to be used as universal machines. For example, while today's production of steel and aluminum by chemical means requires two very different multi-staged processes, a single plasma-based magnetic separation design can be adapted to produce everything from specialty steel to aluminum to cement and more. Even with intermediate stage plasma systems, which use not just the high heats of plasmas, but also the magnetic and other properties to directly process materials, deposits of low concentration ores and minerals will become economically accessible for the first time. For example, roughly one-third of the land area on Earth is covered by laterite soils, which contain significant concentrations of iron, aluminum, titanium, silicon, and hydrogen. While these soils could never be considered economically mineable deposits with existing systems, with intermediate plasma processing systems, this otherwise worthless dirt becomes a rich resource deposit. For higher concentration ores of the type typically mined and processed today, the productivity will leap to levels never before seen. Intermediate magnetic separation systems will allow cement production per worker to grow tenfold, aluminum per worker twentyfold, and steel sixtyfold. Advanced fusion-based systems will drive this even higher. 
even trash from landfills could be completely vaporized and separated out into its constituent elements. All of this provides the proper physical economic perspective needed for the development of the Trans-Pacific Territory, including the Arctic. Much of the territory in the western United States, running north into Canada and Alaska and across the Bering Strait, and down into Siberia and the Russian Far East, is completely undeveloped and features extremely harsh terrains. A fusion driver program not only allows the taming of this territory and the development of the immense resources of Siberia and the Arctic, under a fusion driver program, this territory can become the most productive land mankind has ever created, creating revolutionary increases in physical economic growth over the next generations which will drive and support the development of the global economy.